This is the 2024 Ford Mustang EcoBoost Premium. It's the convertible with the black exterior. It's got the night pony package and the new gray interior. It looks pretty sharp. In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the 2024 Mustang. I'm going to be covering off differences between the EcoBoost, the GT, the Dark Horse, covering off what's going on with available wheel choices, under the hood, interior, exterior, and everything in between. If you're looking for tech-specific walkthroughs, like you want to know how to use the steering wheel buttons, navigate through the cluster screen, or the new multimedia screen, you'll find those walkthroughs down in the description of this video. And I do want to thank Formula Ford for giving me access to this thing to shoot the video for you guys. You can find a build link for this specific vehicle, the contact details for Formula Ford, and all those tech walkthroughs down in the description of this video. The body of the 2024 Mustang got some pretty substantial upgrades over the 2023 model. I mean, you look at the fenders and just like the body in general, like looking at the front end, it's just very different from last year's model. But very similar to what you're going to find in previous generations, the Mustang is only available rear wheel drive. So no front wheel drive or all wheel drive option available whatsoever. You're going to see a series of different style wheels and different tires that are available. So it's going to be 17s, 18s, 19s or 20s with varying styles. The 2024 Mustang had the introduction of the bronze appearance package, which gives you bronzed out wheels instead, which I think look pretty damn sharp. This one has the night pony package, which gives it a slightly unique look. And that's going to be the same way, like when you get the high performance package in the EcoBoost or the GT performance package in the GT, it's going to give you slightly different wheels. And that's the same way with the dark horse. So the overall style is going to depend on what you end up getting. And that's the same way with some of the other stuff in the front end. Like this one doesn't have the high performance package, but you look at the high performance pack or the GT performance pack, you're gonna have upgraded front springs as well as Brembo brakes on top of that. So Brembo brakes and calipers. So if you are going to be taking your Mustang on the track or if you prefer better handling, you might wanna look at one of those packages in comparison to just the base trim levels of the vehicle. There's a little skirt that goes along the side that's got a groove texture and that follows through to the front end of the bumper there. A few different style grills that are available and because this one has the night pony package, it's got the blacked out pony in the middle, which I just think looks sharp. LED headlamps are gonna be standard and you're not gonna find fog lamps inside of the Mustang whatsoever. Because this is just the EcoBoost, the hood, no scoop, but it does have a nice look to it. The GT, you're gonna find a little scoop on the hood itself. This thing still doesn't have the option for the forward sensing system, which means that you're not gonna find a 360 camera in the Mustang whatsoever. But you are gonna find some new things underneath the hood. When you go to lift up, this thing is locked down. So just at the very middle, you're gonna to shoot to the left and oh, on hydraulics, which is amazing. And you've got this, the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine. Slightly reworked from last year. So the 2023 had 310 horsepower in the base model. This thing now has 315 horsepower, but you're gonna find the same 350 pound-feet of torque. The only thing I'm unsure of is what's going on with the high performance package. And that's because the specs aren't actually released for the horsepower specifically for the high performance pack. Like last year, it was 310 and 330 for the regular versus high performance EcoBoost. So as of right now, Ford hasn't officially released the horsepower numbers for the high performance pack, but assuming that we go the same as last year, 335 horsepower, maybe? But I'm gonna say you're at least getting the 315 horses under the hood here. But if you're doing some things yourself, you can easily top up your wiper fluid, easy access to the battery, check change oil, and fill up your other fluids. This thing also has a little black strut brace on top of that. And then a tiny little highlight, there's a little Mustang badge on the very bottom. You're not going to find an engine cover inside of the regular EcoBoost, but you will find one inside of the GT. It's just that EcoBoost doesn't have it. One of the big changes that comes for the 2024 Mustang is actually in the Coyote V8, so that 5 liter engine. So that thing got a big upgrade. It's the engine you're going to find in the GT and the Dark Horse, but it's now pushing out 480 or 486 horsepower and then 415 or 418 pound-feet of torque. And that little like asterisk is whether or not you have the active valve exhaust. So active valve Ford actually is publishing the numbers showing that that active valve system does boost the actual performance inside of the GT. Filling up fuel inside of the Mustang is unchanged from the 23 to the 24. 
still just along the driver's side. And it's an unlocked cover with a capless system that's got anti-siphon technology built in. The horsepower and torque numbers that we were looking at, they're all achieved using a premium fuel. But you don't need to use a premium inside of the EcoBoost or the GT or technically even the Dark Horse. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just regular 87 octane. So if you want the truest possible performance, use a 91 or a 93, but it's just not necessary. I know, especially with crazy high gas prices right now, you can get away with just using a regular 87 instead. Taking a peek along the driver's side door, so you can see their side view mirrors have the blind spot system. So that's gonna highlight if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Typical Mustang styling there. So you've got your intelligent access. So you can push there to lock the doors or slide your hand in in order to unlock. Beautiful. This is the new light gray interior, which we'll touch on in just a second. But along the driver's side door there, some basics. It's got this nice like two-tone, looks like faux carbon fiber. Driver's seat memory is still available in the higher trims. So like the 201A EcoBoost, 401A GT, etc. Basic unlock lock buttons, speaker, handle with your side view mirror control your window control, and then there's a little bit of storage space. Typical Mustang Skyling, so you can see there, a nice little Mustang scuff plate. On the inside, instrument lights, same as always. So this is actually a release for the trunk itself. Figure out what's going on with your running lamps. Still, as always, just recommend keeping it in the auto mode, unless you wanna have your high beams on all the time, in which case you're going into that primary mode instead. From there, there's also a few other options. You can increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen as well. I love that Ford at least brought this over into the 2024, so your little sunglasses holder. Somebody kind of joked that it would be a taco holder. That is a tiny taco. Doable though. Down below, you've also got a series of different types of pedals that are available. So these ones, just your regular aluminums with your hood release as well. Onto the inside. So this is one of the available seat color choices available for the 2024 model. A few different options that are available. Uh, you're either going to have a fully manual or partial manual seat. So you can at least move the seat forwards, backwards this way. So you can, using that toggle, go forwards, backwards, up and down with it. There's two-way lumbar support. And then you could also adjust your backrest, but that's going to be manual. And that's the same across the entire Mustang lineup. So this seat, just your regular seat, there is the option still for the Recaro seats. The big downside of the Recaros is that it's the same thing as last year. You can't get heated, ventilated first row seats whatsoever. My initial impressions of the first row, it's a very big design choice that Ford made with the interior of this thing. It's very different from vehicles that they've done in the past. The interior though, I've got to say is nice. Like this lighter space gray is pretty neat you'd be able to find a version of it inside of the Mach-E, except it's more just like bright. It's brighter and you don't have quite as many contrasting highlights. And then the 2024 Mustang has, I think it's six different interior choices. So you don't, last year there was like that ebony with the blue stitching, but the blue inside of the 2024 is very different. The red inside of the 24 is very different, but I mean, it's the same Mustang styling and comfort for the seat that we've always known. So this is nice though, this is the EcoBoost. So inside of the Mustang in general, you're gonna have cloth seats, there's ActiveX seating material, so faux leather, versus the leather seat option. You're only gonna find the EcoBoost with cloth seats or ActiveX seating material, and then leather seats when you get into the GT, Dark Horse, etc. But the seat is really nice. Oh, is it still? Yes. Still four-way adjustable headrests, which are great. So you can go back and forward with it, up and down, create that like really perfect position, but the headrest is always has great amount of cushion to it. And then whether you get manual seats or power seats are gonna depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in, but even the power seats are only partial power. So you can go up or down at the seat or move forwards and backwards, but the actual backrest itself is still just manual off to the side for the driver passenger side. Nice. All right, taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Ford Mustang. Now this is the 2024 model. 
It's the 201A EcoBoost. So there's a little bit of a difference between the 201 packages, the 401 GT, Dark Horse, and then some of the other ones. And that's literally just right there in the screen. So inside of the EcoBoost, the 201A and some of the other packages, they're connected. Inside of some of the other ones, they're essentially two separated screens instead, but they've got virtually the exact same functionality. So let's dive through. I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know. So first thing, the steering wheel itself is fantastic and it's manual telescoping still. So just by your left knee, so you can go in and out, up and down as necessary. Now, one thing, hold on, let's zoom you out a tiny little eye out there. There you go, that's what I'm looking for. You can see there, flat bottom steering wheel along the very bottom, which I just think that's so neat. Grip, not too shabby. You can lock that thing back into place. It's good. Now the steering wheel itself does have a heated option and you can turn the heated steering wheel on right through the media screen there. Now, if yours didn't have a heated steering wheel, obviously it wouldn't be there, but I gotta say, the new wheel looks nice. I like this little insert. It's like a carbon fiber-esque type of insert there. Wraps all the way around the wheel, along the top and the bottom. Typical pony right along the very middle. And then there are some obviously big changes from the 2023 to the 2024 plus, like big changes. So along the left-hand side, you've got your turn stick, flash your high beams out. Right stick is going to be for your front wipers there. And then adjusting the speed as necessary. Very straightforward. Now, one thing about the high beams themselves before I kind of move on. So as of right now, I've got the instrument lights in the auto mode. So if you're in the auto mode, you can't keep your high beams on all the time. So it's essentially going to be an auto high beam instead. So what that means is that if the vehicle recognizes it needs the beams, it'll turn them on automatically. If somebody's oncoming, it'll lower them and then bring them right back up again. If you want to have your high beams permanently turned on, all you have to do is just go to your low beam mode and then you're going to push away as you can see there, high beams are not permanently turned on. But regardless though, like even if you were in lights off mode, you could still pull in if you wanted to temporarily warn people that there's an oncoming cop or whatever the case may be. This is nice. I like it. Now buttons along the left hand side, these are going to be for your adaptive cruise control system. So you'll be able to turn the adaptive cruise control system on. How far or close to your way do you want to be from the vehicle that's in front of you? Think of it like a one Mississippi, two Mississippi type of a rule. And then from there, you can also see current speed limit there. And you can adjust one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time and then cancel or resume. So the cancel resume straightforward, like you could press your brake as well if you wanted to temporarily cancel it. But when you come to a complete stop, you can get going again. You start moving, push this in order to get yourself back up to the set speed again. So very straightforward in order to increase, decrease one kilometer, one mile per hour at a time. And then there's the lane keeping system. So lane keeping system is different from the lane centering system. So you can see that lane centering button there. But lane keeping, what that's going to do is it works one of three ways. So first way is if it recognizes that you're veering over into a lane without signaling, it's gonna nudge you back into your lane. Way number two is it's gonna shake the steering wheel. Way number three is it'll do both. So it'll gently shake the steering wheel and nudge you back into your lane versus the full lane centering is gonna keep you perfectly balanced in your lane as you go. It is a really, really great system. But so many different options available there. You can go between a series of different modes as well. So you've got custom modes that are available and you can set your custom modes and things like that through the screen, but you can lock out sport mode, track mode, drag, slippery. Look at those animations though. Kudos to whoever designed that, that is so damn cool different custom modes, so nice. Normal, sport, sport would definitely be the way that I would live most of the time though. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that looks good. So sport mode, but it's also a slightly unique cluster screen. And that's because along the side there, we've got the bottom right hand side. So you've got a little button there, so you can push that and that's gonna let you customize a few things. So let's bounce you over a tiny little bit. You can see there are a series of different modes. So there's track apps that are available with like acceleration, brake lap, timers, series of different auxiliary gauges here. So the previous Gen Mustang had a few gauges that were available along the very top, but this one, you can adjust out so many things. So if you wanted to change cylinder head, engine oil pressure, inlet air, etc., you can go larger, smaller view with multi options as well. It's really cool change out your custom mode. So this is where you're going in order to set up your unique profile. So there's two individual ones set there. 
but you can have it set up to do a few things. So what mode do you want to be in? Do you want your sport steering? If you had the active valve exhaust system, that would also show up. Do you want your traction control on off, auto start stop system on off? And then what mode do you want your cluster screen to be in? So there's normal mode. You've got sport uh, track mode, sport mode, and then there's even like the old school Fox Buddy classic mode instead. It is really neat. So you can kind of customize that a little bit. You can customize your colors for primary, secondary colors, and even tweak out the ambient lighting. On top of that, you can adjust your cluster theme. So as of right now, it's on the call mode, but you've got all of the different modes that are available there as well. So let's flip you back over here for a second and go through. So you can match drive mode if you want to. You can have it set up for normal. So this is the way that the normal mode looks versus sport mode. Oh uh, yeah. Versus track mode, so very similar to last year's model. Calming mode instead, gets rid of most things, and then, so let's even see, like we turn off that system there, turn off that system. It's like a naked screen. It's pretty nice. And then you've also got, look at this, old school Fox body, 87 to 93 instead. So if you wanted more of like that classic Mustang look, you've got that option. But I personally love the sport mode. <sighs> look at that. Look at how nice that looks, that's beautiful. And then there's also one other thing that you can adjust through this screen, and that's the flexibility to be able to go through. Let's see if we go through our settings. Oh, instrument cluster, that's what I'm looking for. Instrument cluster, you can also choose what screens are there. So trip one counter, two counter, fuel economy, and a few other things. <clears throat> but that's nice. That's really nice overall. And series of other buttons along the side. So this is your voice command prompt. So be able to do things like change songs, radio stations, navigate using your voice, things like that. This one is gonna let you change out your steering mode. So as of right now, we're in sport mode, so that's why I can't tweak it out. But you'd have the flexibility of num normal comfort or sport steering instead. You can increase or decrease the audio this way. And then this series of different options in order to be able to move through the cluster screen there. So let's kind of hop in a tiny little bit. And let's go through a few options. So you've got your trip one counter. You can press and hold the OK button, as you can see there, to reset. Boom. Drop down. Fuel economy, see how you can reset. You can see what your tire pressure is like, what your gauges are up to as you go, your, your ga other gauge details. Like, I love that you've got basics here, but I love that available through the media screen, you can go through all of these options. What your current Mustang status is, and then driver assistance. So if you've got cruise control and settings and other things turned on, hold on. Wait for this to go away. And you can see there, driver assistance, what's essentially what's available and what's active, yes or no. But you're gonna see, I mean, as you saw the, between different drive modes, slightly different look, but you're always gonna have your tachometer there, speedometer available in either miles or kilometers, your current speed, whether or not you've got adaptive cruise turned on, yes or no. So you can see there, a few things disappear slash reappear, what your current road speed is. Along the outside there, you can see what your current fuel level is how many kilometers you have left to empty. And then the very bottom there, that one is going to be how many kilometers you've driven total. What mode you're currently in. So as of right now in the sport mode, what gear you're currently in. So this is obviously the 10 speed automatic, your current RPM levels. And then you've also got your current engine temperature on top of that. So the gauges are going to look slightly different just depending. The only other thing to point out really is that you also have the option, I mean, obviously for factory navigation here, but if you had Mav uh, maps going, so if you had a route going, it would also show up slightly inside of the cluster screen. So hold on, watch the very bottom as we start. So you can see there, it's gonna tell you essentially like a turn by turn direction. So you don't have the option for full screen maps, unfortunately, but you still do have the option of at least getting a tiny little bit of info down there instead. This is the new Sync 4 media screen that you're gonna find inside of the Ford Mustang. There are technically two different options that are available. The big one is really gonna be the connectivity right in the middle here. So in some of the lower trims, this looks slightly different because the two screens are separated, but otherwise it's fully connected, like I said, with the functionality being virtually identical between the two. So I'm gonna walk you through, show you everything that you need to know. First thing, along the very top, you've got your little home button. So any other screen that you're on, you wanna return home, just push the home button along the very top. There's a clock, which you can push if you wanted to change the actual clock settings, change minutes, hours, AM, PM, 
if you wanted to go into 24 hour mode, so that military time instead, you've got that flexibility. And then auto time update means that it's automatically going to adjust the time based off of your GPS location. Hopping back home, you've got data connectivity along the very top. So whether or not you've got Wi-Fi connected and then a few other things. So you can see there your current outside temperature as well. Now, if you had a phone that was charging, you can also see wireless charge pad. There is a phone that's currently charging up as we go. So that is available there. And then you take the phone off and within a second, you can see there it's disappeared. Along the outside, you've got your basic settings, features, apps, and then climate control along the very bottom. So we'll touch on climate control last, but this is the base home screen layout and there's no way to customize it. So we don't have the flexibility of kind of like doing a press and hold and adjusting and things like that. It's essentially, this is the way that it is. So you've got your navigation off to the left, what media is currently playing, and if your phone is connected, yes or no. I'll connect a phone later and then come back to this setting and show you what it looks like. But starting off with factory navigation first, so this thing, you could go full screen. And as you can see there, really responsive. Wow, that's actually impressively responsive compared to last year. That's really, really good. Nice, back to that split screen. Oh, so like it's a full screen, true full screen, etc. That's kind of nice. Cool. That's nice. And along the side there, you can push the little hamburger icon to go to map orientation. So if you wanted to change 2D, 3D, etc adjust different things with voice. So as you come up to turns, do you want to get a voice and a tone letting you know about the upcoming turn? Strictly a voice or strictly a tone? If you had your live traffic set up, so if you were essentially connected through four connected services, traffic and maps and weather and things like that would show up on the map. You could avoid certain things. So if you wanted to avoid highways, toll roads, tunnels and things like that, you can show certain things on the map as well. So different point of interest icons. So if you wanted to know what parking was available locally, gas stations and things like that, those would also show up on the map. And then a series of other settings. So routing preferences, tons of options. Do you want 3D, 2D map? Do you want the vehicle to automatically reroute for you when a route's available or just do it for you instead? Do you want the fastest or the most eco-friendly route? Do you want to have breadcrumbs on, yes or no? So breadcrumbs on is kind of a neat one because as you go to different areas, it's going to drop different breadcrumbs along the streets that you've gone to. Very useful if you're new to an area, you want to see what areas you've gone to, etc. Predictive destinations. We haven't been to a destination, which is why it's grayed out. You've got privacy info about, and then you've got advanced notif advanced navigation features as well. So, okay, yeah, so I figured. So the, some of the ones that were grayed out, you do need to be fully active in order for some of these advanced features to actually show up. But... It's your basics there. You do need to be connected through a FordPass account in order to be able to do it. So you have to hook up through your cell phone in order to set that up. Moving back, you can search for addresses easily. So you can search for different point of interest icons, series of different options that are available. You can also type in and search by GPS coordinates. So if you wanted to, you can go latitude first, longitude second if you wanted to search that way. Or you've got a few options, ABC. You can start typing in an address. Give it a second to populate and click through. There you go. If your phone is connected, you could call. You could save it as a favorite if you want to or see what parking's nearby. Along the screen itself, you can see what routes are available. So it's giving us two available routes. You can select whichever one and then you'd hit start. You can also tweak out to a split screen there instead or just Obey hit start. traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Why, thank you. Now, inside of a cluster screen, it actually does show the little direction pad along the very bottom. It's going to look slightly different depending on your screen layout, but that is nice. It's good. All right, and then along the side there, a few other things. You can add in a destination along the way. So let's say if you wanted to get to that address, but first you wanted to stop for gas, you could select that, and then it gives you the different waypoints that you're going. You're going to hit add to trip, and it's added that second stop into the trip itself. You could then go and see your full route overview if you wanted to turn off notifications or you can cancel the route. So you can either go to the next stop if you've got multiple stops set up or you can just cancel the full trip. And that's canceled it out instead. And then you can resume if you wanted to go back to your trip. So it's straightforward. You can look at your recents. So whatever destinations you've gone to recently, you can look at your saved destinations on top of that. So a big benefit is that you could set up your home or your work address. And one of the big benefits there is that if you push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, you can say things like navigate home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be. It'll go to whatever address you've set up there. 
So very straightforward, but that's factory navigation. And then if you didn't want to use factory nav, you could hook up through your phone if you want to do on your iPhone or your Android instead. But that's the basics there. Next up is going to be audio. So there's AM, FM, Sirius XM. You could hook up over your phone strictly through Bluetooth if you wanted to stream audio that way. You can connect through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay if you wanted to go that route. And then, as always, you've also got USB support. So if you have a USB stick with MP3s on it, let's do a quick little audio test. Oh, let's plug that in. Now, before I get to the test, I'm hopefully it's not gonna autoplay on me, but you've got a few different speaker choices inside of the Mustang. So it's either gonna be six speaker, nine speaker, or a 12 speaker. The 12 speaker is Bang & Olufsen, so it's just a really, really good sound inside of it. But what you get is going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in and which packages you've added on. So if you want the best possible audio, you're going to want to go for the 201A EcoBoost, the 401A GT, the Dark Horse, whatever the case may be. But let's go through audio. Typically what I find is that with treble and bass, I normally drop the treble by two and I crank the bass by three. And just in like my mind, that always tends to give me pretty good audio, but that's a matter of preference. But the full good mood, but in circulation One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps That's the way to do it. So bass up by three points, treble down by two gives you really, really good audio inside of this thing. So the entertainment sources that you get are going to depend on what you have connected to the vehicle. So it'll just take a second. You can see there, USB device connected. But you go to AM, FM, whatever the case may be. You could easily tune to different stations that way or do kind of like a finer tune. If you wanted to save in a preset, so you can see there we've got a series of different presets that are available, mix of AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc. So all you do is if you wanted to save a preset, so that one's already saved in, you could just press and hold and over to order, overwrite it. Or if you've overwritten it accidentally, just go back, press and hold in order to save the new preset in. You can direct tune a few different ways. So you can tune this way to the next station, do a fine tune that way. You can also do a direct tune instead. So whether you're on AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc., you could direct tune a few different ways if you want to. And then like I said, if you wanted to save any presets, you just go to any of the available spots, press and hold, and that's going to save it in. Pretty straightforward. If you go sources, Sirius XM is going to give you a few other options. So along the very top, there's a little notification bell. So whenever the artist or the song comes on, you can have it set up so it's going to notify you when those are available or when they're playing. From there, you can also create a unique listener. So if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, you can have this set up to create a unique profile experience. So you can look at your favorites. You can customize a listener, create a unique listener. Your listener settings, you can set it up. So if you wanted to block explicit content, tune to start, etc. And then you can also change out your preset pages. I always just recommend, especially if you're a big audio listener, go to the max number of pages. And the big reason why is because when you go home, all of a sudden, you've got 30 individual presets there and they're all a mix of AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc. Pretty neat. You can tweak out stations that way, play pause because it's Sirius, XM, start the song over. And then if we were, let's go back to FM for a second. Actually, we could have done that on where we were at Sirius, XM, but we go to tone settings, so treble mid-range bass. You're typically going to find it like this, but I recommend dropping the treble by two, cranking the bass by two to three. That generally gives you pretty good audio inside of this thing. Moving back, balance and fade. Are you the only one in the vehicle? You want to have it focus on you versus rear focus, front focused, etc. Or back to center. Back over, speed compensated volume. So as you're going faster or slower, it's going to lower or raise the, vo uh, the volume as necessary. And then what mode do you want to be in, either stereo or surround? Series of different options. But that's the basics of using audio inside of this thing. Moving back home, next up is going to be adding in a phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So we're going to start off on the iPhone side of things. And we're just going into Bluetooth, Mustang. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up, which is perfect. Do you want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to hit don't allow. I mean, obviously, if this is your car, you'd want to hit yes there. 
if you accidentally hit no. For your safety, please stay alert to changing <laughs> road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. There we go. So if you've accidentally hit no there, just delete the phone from the vehicle and then the vehicle from the phone and then just re-add it again and it'll give you the option of being able to set that up. From here, so you've got the option of, nine, let's go here, 911 assist. So I always recommend turning this one on for a few different reasons. One of the big ones is that if you're ever in an accident and it's a major one, it's automatically gonna dial 911 for you. So always recommend keeping that one turned on. And then as you can see there, you're fully connected. So you've got favorites, recents, contacts, keypad, phone list. So if you have multiple phones connected to the vehicle, that's gonna show up there. You can look at phone settings. So if you connect through, you can manage contacts, look at text messages, roaming warnings, and things like that. So there are a series of different options that are available. But you saw earlier, you've also got the option of using CarPlay and it's wireless CarPlay inside of this thing. So what you're gonna do is hit use CarPlay, enable. It's connecting through there and boom, you are fully connected. Now this is a nice kind of little split screen, but one cool thing is that along the very top, so just above the time, you can push there in order to expand it. Bam, look at that. Into this beautiful full screen experience instead. I love it. Love the way that it looks. So you've got your navigation along the very middle. If you had audio playing, that would show up there. So you've got podcasts there as well, and then you've kind of got miscellaneous. Along the outside, you've got your current phone status. So what your current charge levels are like if you've got maps that are open. So it's essentially which map application was open last, which audio application was open last, and which miscellaneous application was open last. And then from there, there's also this little icon view instead. So you can go icon view, swipe across. So you can see there, Google Maps was last open, but if you open Apple Maps instead, that's gonna open it up. It's trying to find my location. But you can see there, it's full screen, but it, for whatever reason, it's not full screen Apple Maps. Tray Bazaar, Tray Bazaar. But you could swipe across that way if you want to. You can zoom in and out this way. There's no pinch to zoom capability. You can search for addresses, look at previous destinations, or jump back home. If you wanted to jump into Google Maps instead. Yeah, Google Maps, there we go. Nice and full screen capability. There you go. Fairly responsive. No pinch to zoom, but you can go in and out this way. Or hit done along the very top. If you wanted to avoid certain things like avoid highways, toll roads, and ferries, you can look at map colors, satellite maps, you adjust your volume and things like that. You can search for addresses, previous destinations, and things like that along the very top. And it's the same idea with Waze. So if you're a fan of using Waze instead, you can search for addresses, star out. You can also zoom in and out that way if you want to, hit done, and then just back to your basic home screen there. Now, one nice thing is that if you press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, that's also going to activate your Siri Assistant. So it's just this longer press and hold to activate this Assistant, which is nice. And then, as I mentioned, if you've got podcasts that were opened up last, it's essentially going to be Maps, what uh, music application was opened up, and then Miscellaneous application instead. So very straightforward using this. But, I mean, you saw it there. If you wanted to kind of do a little split screen instead, you would have that flexibility. And then you can kind of go up and down between your different options there. So if you wanted to have CarPlay going while you're listening to your radio, you would have the flexibility to do it. Now, one nice thing is that through your screen, or through your phone, I should say, through the screen general settings, if you go to CarPlay, click on your vehicle, you can turn CarPlay off, you can forget it, or you can customize it. So let's say if you're a bigger fan of maybe listening to your podcasts and you wanna have your audiobooks up there as well as maybe Google Maps, just do a press and hold to drag and drop or you can also delete. So if you don't want any of those applications, you can remove them and it gets rid of them from the screen, but it adds them up back into the very bottom. So you could add them back in if you want to. And then if you've done too much and you're not a fan of what you've done with the changes, along the very top on CarPlay, you can hit reset, reset layout, and that brings you back to your factory default screen there instead. So it's that simple setting up an iPhone inside of this vehicle. All right, and next up, Let's set up an Android. So setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So I mean, obviously as of right now, you've got the phone connected. So if we were to click back through, it would launch me back into the iPhone. So what you're gonna wanna do, if you go into settings, phone list, you've got the iPhone that's been connected. So as of right now, we want to add in a new phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. You're gonna open up your other phone and as you can see there, Ford Mustang, so we're gonna connect there. 
you want to allow your contacts to sync up, I'm going to hit skip and same idea. I'm going to skip the SMS messages. Fully connected, so the device is set For up, ready safety, to use. Please stay alert to change in road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Why, thank you. And the device also supports wireless Android Auto, so let's enable that. Perfect, and we just want to continue. Boom. And three, two, one. I mean, as you can see, they're fully connected, which is nice. Now, one thing is that this thing also does have full screen capabilities. So it's going to be split screen as a default, but along the very top right side, right next to the temperature, you can see this little button there. So you're going to push that to go full screen. So it's still kind of like a little split screen. But if you hit the map icon, that brings you into your full screen Android Auto. Ah, yeah. Nice pinch to zoom capabilities, fairly responsive, which is good. Drag and drop around. You can search for addresses and then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side, you can push there if you wanted to avoid certain things. So route options, so avoiding toll roads, ferries, and things like that. You can also mute out notifications, see route options. There are sorry, different perspectives. You can plus or minus this way as well. Along the side, you can see what's going on with your current phone status maps, phone, things like that. And then you can also turn on your Google Assistant that way. You can also press and hold on the steering wheel in order to activate your Siri or your Google Assistant that way instead. You can push this button along the very bottom to go to your little split screen or to your icon view. So you can see there, Google Maps, weather, customize, and a few other things. So you do have the flexibility to customize this thing a tiny little bit, not quite as much as what you saw on the iPhone side, but it still does give you a few customization options. So on your phone, all you're going to do is search for Android Auto and you're going to go into Android Auto settings. Once you're in settings, you can see there are a series of different things that are available. So privacy options, change layout, you've got taskbar widgets, Google Assistant, Hey Google, series of things. And then you've also got the flex. Ooh, haha. <laughs> it's because I said the, the word, I said this word, but you can also customize the launcher. So as of right now, you don't have the flexibility of, yeah, Waze is installed on this phone, but it's unfortunate it's not available to be able to add on here as of yet. But you can customize the launcher here if you want to. So very similar to the iPhone side of things, if you want to have phone and things like that first. The only kicker is that any changes that you make here, you unfortunately actually have to get out of Android Auto. So shut it down and then relaunch it in order for any changes to take into effect. But you still do have that flexibility. But I mean, it's nice. Google Maps, really nice. Love the pinch to zoom on there, super responsive. It's great that you've got the flexibility of going either full screen or split screen, like what we saw on the iPhone side. And then you can also go back home, go into settings, phone list. And then this is one really cool thing. So if you were, let's say, go back to your phone itself, you're connected to the Samsung for both your phone and for audio. But let's say if you have one phone with all of your music, and one phone that you want to have your phone connected to for phone calls, you've got that flexibility. So you can kind of do like a mix and match between any of these four. It can either be Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, not both, but you can have any of these four set up for either phone. So if you want to have one phone connected for both the phone and for the audio, you've got that flexibility. Or if you just want to have one phone connected for audio for the phone, etc., you would be able to do that. Really neat. You can look at phone settings, you can delete phones, or you press this one, so straightforward, it's nice. No drag and drop capabilities, but like I said, if you wanted to delete, delete yes. That's deleted it, same idea, let's delete this other one from the view. Oh, actually, before I do, haha. -ha. This is how the home screen looks like when you've got a phone connected. So nothing too crazy, but I mean, it still is nice that it shows you your basics there, and then you can click through in order to get to the basics of your phone again. Nice, nice and simple. We saw earlier, go back home. If you want to remove the phone, you're going to go to settings, phone list, phone settings, delete. Yes. And as you can see there, the phone is deleted. And that's how you set up Android and iPhone devices inside of the new Mustang. And from there, hopping back home, that's the basics of the main part of the home screen. Moving into settings now, there are a ton of things. So you've got radio options. So your radio text, you can adjust your presets there. You can add in a phone. Look at sync navigation. So that's how you get into your factory nav with all of the options that we've already seen. So avoiding things on the route. So like highways, toll roads, tunnels, and things like that. 
different sound settings that we've already seen. So adjusting your tone settings, balance and fade, etc. Different vehicle settings, 30 minute max idle. You wanna make sure you turn that one off if you're going to a drive-in. So the car is just gonna stay on. Rear occupant alert is gonna remind you to check the back seats just in case you wanna make sure you haven't forgotten a kid or a fur baby back there. Alert detections, easy entry exit. When you've got a power seat, with this thing turned on, it's essentially gonna lower the seat and back it up so you can get in and out a little bit easier. You've got serial numbers, a few different options for the alarm system. So you can have it ask on exit, you can have your motion sensors on, off, etc., or just always have it on. So that one's gonna be a matter of preference. Next up, remote start. So you can remote start through the key fob or through Ford Pass on your cell phone. You can turn off the whole system if you want to, but when you remote start, what happens? Do you let the vehicle determine what the climate control setting should be? Do you let it determine if the heated seats, ventilated seats or the heated steering will come on? And then how long do you want the remote start to last? So five, 10 or 15 minutes. So you can actually use the key fob in order to roll the windows down. So let's hop outside and I'm gonna show you how that process works. Taking a peek at the key fob for the Mustang. So it's unchanged relatively from the 23 to the 24 model, unless you've got the active valve exhaust, in which case there would be an extra button. So you'd be able to essentially like turn the exhaust on without starting the car. So kind of nice if you're at shows and you wanna showcase what it sounds like. But for most people that don't have active valve, this is the way your fob's gonna look. You've got the unlock button, lock button, remote start, trunk release, corner panic alarm, and then the emergency access key. So if you wanna lock the glove box or if you wanna unlock the side door in case the fobs died, that's how you're going in order to make it happen. Remote starting the vehicle is straightforward. So you press the lock button once, circle button twice. That's obviously not gonna be available if you're in the manual transmission, but it is in the automatic. So relatively straightforward and then very similar to the last year. You can also use the key fob in order to roll the windows down. All you're gonna do is press and hold the unlock button twice. On the second button press, you're gonna hold and then watch this. There you go. You can press the lock button to pause it part way and then press and hold twice again in order for it to drop back down. And you can see there, both of the windows to the front and the rear will roll down because this is the convertible. But I mean, obviously if you were in the fastback, it would just be the front windows that would roll down. So that is a really neat setting. I love that you've still got that available. So it is only remote down, but it's manual back up again. Options for your wipers. So courtesy wipe, if you've got your front wipers going, it's going to wait for the whole cycle to go through. And then it's gonna one more time to get rid of any excess liquid. And then rain sensing wipers as well different options for lighting. So auto high beam with that one turned on, if you're in the auto mode for your light switch, you essentially don't need to worry about flicking your high beams on. So you can kind of flash them if you want to, but with the auto mode with auto beams, if it's dark out, it's gonna automatically turn on your high beams and then dim them automatically for you. You can turn off the auto high beams. And then if you want your high beams turned on all the time, you just have to be out of the auto mode in order to turn them on. Welcome lighting as you approach the vehicle, and then when you go to lock the doors, do the lamps stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 120 seconds, or do they just turn off automatically? That one's gonna be a matter of preference. Options for the locks. Do you want the doors to automatically unlock when the vehicle's parked? Do you wanna have different chirps and things like that? So the big one there is if you go to shut the door and it's not shut properly, you go to lock the door, it's gonna give you a little chirp letting you know. And then when you go to remote unlock the doors, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's door? So you've got some options there. Tire mobility kit, the Goop is technically good for four years. It's gonna tell you that you need to replace it. And then if you're doing oil changes yourself, this is where you're going in order to be able to reset your oil life filter. You've got clock settings, which we saw earlier. You can either get to clock settings under your settings or by clicking on the time, you can create a unique profile. And then one of the big benefits of setting up a unique profile, well, you saw it there, it's going to remember everything. So all of your driver assistance settings, your navigation, your phone, audio, things like that. So all of your individual radio presets, essentially how you have this thing set up is gonna be locked to your own unique profile. Big benefit there is that if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, it's going to remember all of your individual settings, which is amazing. Very straightforward. I mean, you saw there, you're just gonna start by entering in a name. Click through. You can set up your driver's seat memory if you want to. You're gonna match up a profile, yes or no. And 
And there we go. So it saved the profile for us. You can click through, you can add in a key fob or you can delete the profile. So like I said, big benefit of setting up a unique profile is as multiple people are driving this thing, it's going to remember the majority of your settings, which I mean, I, I love that that's available. Series of general settings, which nothing crazy. You can change it out to English, Spanish, French. You can change it out to either Celsius, Fahrenheit. And then these numbers are gonna be dynamic just based off of, yes, yeah, so you can see miles and liters, et cetera just whether or not you're in miles per miles or kilometers. So you can also kind of see it right in the cluster screen there as well. As I switch between kilometers or miles, it's adjusting that out. Change out your tire pressure units, the beeping that we're getting. You could disable that if you want to. And then you can reset a few things. So you can reset Ford Pass or perform a full factory reset. So if you're selling your vehicle, that's really going to make it happen. From there, series of options for the instrument cluster. So you've got the flexibility of choosing screens. So if you want to, you can show trip one counter, two counter, and a few other things. That's gonna adjust what's going on inside of the cluster when you push the up down arrows on the actual steering wheel itself. Next up, center display. So as big, as bright as this display is, if you find it to be a little bit too much, you can go to a calming screen instead, button press to bring it back to life, and then you can also adjust the screen brightness. got some connectivity settings. Big one here is gonna be Bluetooth vehicle name. So if you wanted to change the name of your vehicle from Ford Mustang to somewhere else, that's where you're going to make it happen. So connectivity, Bluetooth, et cetera. The, the other ones here, not as big of a deal like Wi-Fi. You do have the option of connecting over Wi-Fi if you wanted to do all of your updates that way. And then the other one is going to be vehicle hotspot. So the vehicle does have the option of being used as a mobile hotspot for a number of devices, but you need a data only plan in order for that to work. You do technically have it available as an option though, with a series of different settings. So you can change out your network name, password, you can kick individual users off and adjust profiles and things like that. So, I mean, if you're gonna be using the vehicle as a hotspot, yes, but I mean, you could just toggle this thing off if you want to, if you know you're never gonna use it. Different options for mobile apps, so certain ones will only work via USB. Software updates can also be done automatically. I always recommend just turning it on automatically, but have it custom and have it later on at night. So, I mean, this is actually pretty nice. So the default there, yeah, just like one o'clock in the morning, because it might take like three, four hours for the updates to download and then install. So definitely recommend at least making sure these things are turned on automatically, but scheduling it for like four or five hours when you know the car is gonna be sitting idle. So ideally at home overnight while you're sleeping, et cetera. Ford Assistant, so you can push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel if you wanted to activate your assistant. So you'd be able to do things like play Bluetooth audio. You can also change to different stations and you can navigate using your voice. You can even adjust your climate control settings using your voice. So there are no more physical climate controls, but you could turn on your heated ventilated seats. You can adjust your driver passenger side, so your dual zone climate control temperatures and things like that. Turn on or off your heated steering wheel, et cetera, all using your voice. And then you can push the voice command prompt or you can have it listen for a wake word. So let's say if you had it listen for, okay, Ford. You can see there the voice assistant pops up instead. You can have an advanced mode, which means you won't get as many notifications phone confirmation, do you want to call such and such person, yes or no, and then the command list. So whether or not the command list shows up, that's the command list, it's going to be a matter of preference. And then voice command help is everything that you're able to do. So I honestly just recommend playing around with this for a little bit because you can do so much. But get to know the basics of what you can do because I mean the voice assistant inside of this thing is really, really good. Next up is 911 assist which we saw when you connected a phone initially. So as long as you've got 911 assist turned on and a phone's connected, if you're in a serious accident, it's gonna automatically dial 911 for you. And then there's also valet mode. So valet mode is a nice one because enter in a nice difficult password, don't use 0000, but it's actually locked this thing. So hold on, I want you to listen to this for a second. it unlocks and locks. So when you have valet mode on, not only does it lock the screen, it now also locks the armrest. That is a really, really cool feature. And then the only other thing to point out, you've got your basic apps along the side, which nothing really crazy there, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and then all of your different climate control settings. 
So if you've got heated, ventilated seats, you could toggle on and off as you go here. You can turn the whole thing off, adjust out, and that's the same for the driver and the passenger side. And it's the same thing with the climate. So you could drive it, you can drag the climate this way if you want to, or just do a plus and minus this way. Or I mean, you saw earlier, press the voice command prompt to adjust it. You can turn on the heated steering wheel. You can adjust fan speed again, plus or minus, or drag it up and down. And then you can have your auto mode going. And then whether you want this going to, nope, your windshield, face, feet, some sort of combination, you can turn the system off, air circulate, max, air C, max AC, or dual. So if your passenger side was set up to something different, if you hit dual, it essentially set, oh, of course it went away. If you hit dual, it defaults the passenger side to whatever the driver's side is set up to. And you've got max defroster and then your rear window defroster as well. But down the center stack, you've got your push button start, auto start stop system, and then your my Mustang mode, which gives you all of these other options. So you've got track apps, we've got your different acceleration timers, brake performance, lap timers, and line lock. Oh, yes. Really useful. I love this. I love how like Ford now has all of these little info icons there instead. So if you want to do a burnout, this is where you're going to make it happen. All of your auxiliary gauges, which might look slightly different depending on which mode you're in. And then you can push this button along the very bottom right side if you want to do adjust things. So if you wanted to show, I love this, so many different options. So I know the last gen Mustang had a few gauges that like physical gauges that were available along the top, but having the option of going through all of these different options instead, I think is pretty neat. And like even when you're in this larger screen, you can kind of adjust out to individual options. Yeah, there you go. That's a good setup. So you've got a ton of different options that are available here as you go. Nice. Oh, that's really cool. Squirrel, moving back. Custom mode, series of other ones that are available here too. So you can create your own unique profile. So actually, wow, six individual profile settings where you can set up different things. So what mode do you want to be in? So your base drive, do you want to be in normal mode, sport, track mode, drag mode, slippery, snowy conditions, etc. That's really cool. And then you can adjust each individual. Oh, okay. Okay, I got you. So you can kind of customize things a tiny little bit. There you go. Yes, you're in your normal mode. Oh, I got you. So you're kind of like your base drive mode and then your individual mode for everything else. Ah, that makes more sense. Okay, you're in sport mode of sport steering, traction control on off, auto start stop on off. And then which cluster screen setup do you want? Normal, sport, calm, track, or classic Fox body instead. So it is kind of cool. You've got the flexibility of adjusting this out a little bit and you can have it permanently lock into place if you are a bigger fan of a certain look. So if you prefer that calming screen, focus on the speed or the track mode there instead, you would have the flexibility of being able to lock that to an individual profile. And I mean, as you saw there, you can create six individual profiles instead. Now, the one thing that this thing is missing inside of the pony mode would be for your active valve exhaust. So this one specific one doesn't have active valve, but it would show up along the side there if you wanted to change between your different active exhaust modes. But still, it's kind of cool. It's nice custom mode. I like that. I like that you can customize it. Customize all of the different colors there as well. So your primary versus secondary colors. Nice. Ambient light color. Ooh, that is a boatload of other choices for ambient light too. That's really neat. And it's going to show up different parts of the vehicle. So like by your feet are going to be one of the big ones inside of this Mustang, which is kind of nice. Sweet. And then there's also a cluster theme. So you can have it match your drive mode. You can have it a normal sport, track, calming, etc. So there's a series of different options that are available and it tweaks out the overall look of the cluster screen itself, which is kind of nice. There are a series of different features that are available. Starting off with driver assistance, you've got auto hold setting. With auto hold turned on, what that's going to do is if you're in drive and you come to a stop, take your foot off the brake, it's gonna hold you in place. Cruise control, few different options. So you can go to like a normal cruise control instead and then adaptive with lane centering. So that's the one that's gonna keep you perfectly balanced in your lane. Predictive speed assist has a few other options too. So predictive speed assist is an interesting one because as you come up to turns, it's automatically gonna to help to slow you down. And then if the speed changes, so let's say if you go from like a hundred row down to an 80, 
if you've got your tolerance at a level set at zero, it's going to drop you from 100 down to 80. And then the other way works too. So if you've got adaptive cruise control turned on and the speed goes from 80 to 100, it's going to automatically increase you to 100. But it's all based off of your tolerance level. So if you've got your tolerance level high or lower, so let's say if you've got it at 10 and it drops from 100 to 90, there's going to be no change whatsoever in your speed. But if you've got it, let's say at zero, and it goes from, like I said, 100 to 80, it's going to automatically adjust your speed out that way instead. It's a very interesting way that this works, but you don't have to use the adaptive cruise system if you don't want to. It's just a really nice one to use. Speed limit assist. Eh, I typically, let's say, let's turn that one off and we'll get any sort of speed warnings or anything like that. But if you're going too fast, it can let you know, depending on how far over the speed limit you're going. I just personally recommend keeping those ones turned off. Lane keeping system works three different ways. The same as last year's model. So way number one is an alert. So if you start to veer over into another lane without signaling, it's going to shake the steering wheel, almost as if you're going over a rumble pavement. The aid is actually going to nudge you back into your lane and the alert and the aid are going to do both. So it'll give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake and it'll nudge you back into your lane. It's not going to turn on your wipers. That was just me touching it accidentally. And then the alert intensity is the intensity of the steering wheel shake. From there, you've also got your pre-collision assist system and same thing. So a few different options. You've got the option of having the vehicle help you out automatically braking. So if it recognizes there's a potential collision, it can brake for you. It, there's also evasive steering and that puts the steering wheel into like a hypersensitivity mode to help you get out of a potential obstacle or a collision easier. And then the sensitivity of that alert. There's also exit warning. So with that turned on, it essentially utilizes the blind spot monitoring system to let you know if you're potentially going to run into an issue when you go to open your door. Rear view camera delay, eh, no biggie. Blind spot system. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, side view mirror is going to highlight to let you know. Cross traffic alert. So if somebody's coming perpendicular, so from the left or right, it's going to let you know of a potential collision. It can actively brake for you as well. So if you're backing up and someone's behind you that you don't see, it's going to help brake for you if somebody's coming from the left or the right. Driver alert. If you start to veer over too many times with that signaling, it's going to tell you you should probably take a break. You can edit out a favor button. So that's another button down the center stack. And you can either have it turn on the auto hold setting or your calming screen instead. And the calming screen is the one that essentially just puts the screen into like a sleepy time mode instead. So your calming screen is that one there. Bringing this thing back to life, you can also edit it out to go to one of the other options. And then there's also a fully digital owner's manual. So it is nice because, I mean, as there's a lot of information to go over here. And if you start getting weird messages in the cluster screen, you're not really sure what it can do. Or if you don't know when you should maintain your vehicle, like maybe you don't know when you need to go for oil changes. So just search for oil change. Oh, of course, did not yield any results. That's outrageous. Okay, let's try oil. There we go. Okay, perfect. That's what I'm looking for. So intelligent life monitors, resetting, filling, etc. So it gives you a t like literally everything you need to know about the vehicle. So if this video didn't help out, these videos are going to help kind of like touch off that little bit of extra knowledge that you might need. Push start, which I mean looks drastically different than last year. Auto start stop, so the one that's going to kill power to the engine if you're stopped for an extended period of time. Your buy mode, so you've got the flexibility of customizing your Mustang. Turn your traction control on or off. Four-way blinkers. This one's a custom button, so if you wanted to create well, custom to a degree, you can either have it work as auto hold or a calming screen instead. And then your max windshield defroster. You've got a volume rocker with your power button. There's also 12-volt power point and then a wireless charge pad. Nice, that same type of like faux carbon fiber look in there. Park reverse neutral drive, and then there's a dedicated low gear. There's also no oh, manual parking brake. It's an electronic parking brake now instead. A few basic cup holders. Love it. Like I said, the basics here. Love that new highlight there. You're going to have a unique chassis number when you get into the dark horse. There's also regular glove box with, ooh, actually, there was in the last generation like a tiny little glove box along the very top there as well, like a little storage area. And that is now gone. No, small highlights. This thing's still lockable at least. Up overhead, auto dimming rear view mirror is standard in most trim levels. And because this is the convertible, well, I mean, you're gonna have these buttons there regardless, that's for the lights, but these buttons are for the convertible. So you could, if you wanted to open this thing up, twist. But 
but I mean, that's, that's really nice. And then up overhead from there, you've also got garage door opener, so you can easily program that in at home if you've got one. A little ticket heart holder, vanity mirror with lights built in. And then, this thing's extending out, blocking most of the sun. One thing that's different from the 2023 to the 2024 is that there were a few pieces along the very back. And those pieces along the very back were essentially to hide off some of the mechanical components that were there. It's unfortunately no longer available. It's not sold with the 2024 Mustang. So if you want those pieces, I'm actually going to drop a link down to eBay. You'll be able to pick them up or Ford parts directly if you really wanted them. It's a little bit of a pain to have to keep on peeling them on and off and on and off every time you want to open and close the roof, but it's just an aesthetic thing. If you don't like those gears being shown, you don't have to. And then rolling this thing back up or closing the roof, I guess you could say, you're just going to push away. Nice and simple. Bam. Look at that. The seat is comfortable. Now, like with it as far down as it's going to go, I've got three and a half ish inches of headspace. Now this, I'm trying not to like push up because this is the convertible. So it's soft top obviously has a little bit of give, but I mean, if you're like six, four, maybe six, five, you'll be able to get into this thing. If it was the fastback though, so the hard roof, it'd be a little bit tight for like people that are much taller. The big thing is obviously gonna be in the second row. Like if you're taller trying to sit in the second row, it's, it's just not happening. With the convertible top down, I can fit. I mean, it's not comfortable. I mean, it's next to impossible with the roof down for me to sit in the second row. And then in the fastback, pretty much just like forget it. But if the roof's like, if it's open, I could fit in the second row as long as the driver has their seat forward a little bit. This is pretty much the only time you're going to find me getting into the second row of a Mustang. Easily anyways. So I've done it in previous videos, but without the top being down inside of the convertible, there's like 0% chance, like I'm not gonna fit back here. I'd kind of be like Quasimodo bent over, but I wouldn't be able to get in because my head, I'm too tall. Like if you're five, six, I'd probably say that's the cutoff. But with the driver's seat set up for myself being six feet tall, I have like next to no knee space, pretty much no foot space. I could still sit in here though. It's just that like I said, if the top was up or if you were in the fastback, there's 0% chance that I'm fitting inside of the second row. There's not much back here anyways. Like there's a speaker off to the left and the right side. Behind the passenger side, there's a little pocket there. Nothing behind the driver though. And then you've got your releases if you wanted to move the seats forward in order to get out. I wanna show you what it's like when the top is down. Or the top is or just regularly up. So I'm going to, let's do a quick start here. I wanna show you something. Watch this. Okay, so look at the difference here when the top is closed. Like I can barely sit up. Yeah. So, I mean, realistically, like if you've got shorter friends or you don't mind being uncomfortable for a tiny little drive, then the second row of the Mustang works. If you're in the convertible, it will work for people. Like I said, I'm six feet tall and like you could have people that are six feet tall kind of back to back here. It just is a little bit uncomfortable for people who are sitting in the second row. Not impossible. Just like a little bit uncomfortable because this is the EcoBoost. You're looking at dual tip exhaust with quad tip when you get into the GT. This one doesn't have the active valve exhaust system, but you will find it available in either the EcoBoost or the GT. And it just, it completely changes the dynamic of the sound. But when I'm in a Mustang with one of those exhaust systems, I'm definitely shooting a video on it. You can find a link down in the description of this video if that video is live. You're always gonna find the reverse sensing system now inside of the Mustang, along with the rear camera and then sequential turn lights. So those are always gonna be there. This is just the regular deck lid spoiler that you're gonna find inside of the Mustang. There is the option when you get into some of the performance packages for when it sits higher, it's gonna look slightly different inside of the Dark Horse. And then as always, you've got a ton of different aftermarket solutions available if you need something a little bit more robust or ridiculous. There are options trace underneath the rear pony 
and then you're just going to push in the middle uh, and then lift up and unchanged from the 2023 to the 2024 model now this one is obviously the convertible and the convertible top is down and one thing that i love about the convertible is that even with the top down it doesn't affect the space in the trunk whatsoever like you do lose a little bit when you look like specifically the height at the back when you've got the convertible but i mean realistically it doesn't affect it too much there's a boatload of cargo space back here one thing about the convertible over the regular fastback is that the rear seats are actually locked in place so you don't have the flexibility of being able to lower or raise them whatsoever you're not going to find much off to the left side there's a tiny little light tucked along the side and then you're going to find a subwoofer off to the right but that subwoofer whether or not you get it is going to depend on which trim level or sorry which package option you've got because this is the 201A EcoBoost. So it's pretty much as loaded as this thing's going to get before you add on some extra packages like the high performance, etc. This thing has just the regular carpeted liner in the back. And then when you lift it up, you're going to find the inflator kit. So no mini spare tire inside of this one, but there is the inflator kit, the goop, and then the white spigot if you ever need to fill up using a jerry can. So if you ever puncture a tire, you could try to seal it yourself. But as a Ford owner, you do have access to Ford roadside assistance, and that's good for the powertrain warranty of the vehicle. So that same five year, 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles. If you pop a tire, puncture tire, if you need fuel delivery, your batteries died, whatever the case may be. As a Ford owner, you do have those five years of roadside assistance if you need it. And that was everything you needed to know about the 2024 Ford Mustang. If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. But if you found this video useful, share it with someone if you think they might find it helpful. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video. And until I see you next time, take care.